I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. With Ben Affleck now being chosen as the new Dark Knight, you have to wonder if anyone ever gave any consideration to having Ben Affleck play a superhero in the past. It's Daredevil, isn't it? No! No, 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 no! You don't understand. This isn't just a bad comic book movie. This is a bad comic book movie from the early 2000s. You know how comic book films are huge now, and smart, and funny, and clever? Well, back in the day, comic books were still kind of seen as kid stuff. And films like these certainly didn't help its case. So comic book movies back then had to try even harder to be taken seriously, which surprisingly backfired in how repetitive they became. Every movie had to be dark and gritty and painful, which isn't bad once in a while, but when every single fucking one of them starts to look like that, they start to come across as mopey, complainy, and downright not fun. Don't get me wrong, some films did it okay, but ones like Daredevil? Uh, let's just say something I'm really not looking forward to reviewing alone. You won't need to, critic. I will help you. Who are you? I am a superhero from the early 2000s, simply known as... The Angst. Well, that's great. I could use some help reviewing this. Here, why don't you come sit next to me? Thank you, but I must stay here. I have so many brooding poses on top of rooftops to show. Oh yeah, I guess that was kind of a thing for a while. But we will get through this together, or my name isn't THE ANGST! <sighs> Alright, prepare for early 2000s super cheese with Daredevil. It makes me want to hang my head in contemplation. As the credits roll, blood drips down a stained glass window of the Virgin Mary while our hero hangs in pain off the cross at the top of a church. Yep, it's that kind of movie, kids. Why don't you just throw in God weeping in the corner saying, What poetic despair has life become? <sighs> we then flash back to the good old days of the bad old days when we see Affleck, playing Matt Murdock, growing up in a part of town called Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, you know it's coming, so here it is. This is fucking painful! Back to the reveal. When he was a young boy, he was always beat up by the kid from- Oh shit, there's a Sopranos joke too? Crap, where's that joke filed under? Um... Of course! No. I was frozen! No. Um... So... That's why you were interrogated in Law and Order? <laughs> what do you want? They sprung it on me! He's upset because his dad used to go nine rounds with heavyweight Lewis. Now he goes nine rounds with heavyweight Heineken. You don't hit nothing but books, get me? But when he discovers his dad was working for a crime boss, he stumbles onto some hazardous chemicals that make him blind. You know, why is it anything that can give you superpowers is not better protected? You can write biohazard all you want on it, but when kids are allowed in the area and it's fucking everywhere like goddamn Candy Crush, you might want to rethink security a little bit. I'm sorry, Matty. His dad gives up his life a crime, but he shouldn't feel too sorry as the chemicals heighten Murdoch's other senses, allowing him to see the world like every special feature in a PS3 game. Hey, Murdoch! <laughs> Round two. Yeah, that's right. We're such one-dimensional bullies, we're actually gonna beat up a blind kid. We kind of have no souls. Next, we're gonna teach tap dancing to people in wheelchairs. Also while beating them up. It's a thug thing, you wouldn't understand. Kane! All I can do is just stand here and take it, I guess! He's even become so good that he can even tell when his father is losing a fight. Come on, Dad! Come on, Dad, get up! So wait a minute. His powers are so good he can hear punches over a screaming crowd and he can take on bullies all by himself? Oh yes, superpowers can do that. I'm actually completely deaf. You are? Yes, chemical liquid goo made me lose all my hearing. But it also gave me super listening powers as well. So, there's totally no point to you being deaf then? Huh? If one thing was taken away from you but then given back in a different way, there's totally no point in losing it. Of course there is. It gives me an edge! No, it doesn't. If anything, you can sense things better than you could before. Look at our hero. He doesn't even need the stick. Not only is he a better fighter than most, but he's pointing out when to cross the street better than mandatory cameos can. So the disability is totally pointless. In fact, it's almost like you don't even have a disability. Well... I also broke my arm. Did you get it fixed? Maybe. Then it doesn't matter! It doesn't impact anything with your character! I am the angst! Does a gush of wind ever just push you off a building? Not yet. Oh, 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 oh,
So because his father doesn't throw the fight, he's killed by a bunch of thugs with the final punch being given by a villain called the Kingpin, who leaves a rose with all his victims because it'll leave no trace that way. Bruce, I mean Peter, I mean Simba, I mean, oh, you know what to do with this. Um, hi audience! Uh, the director has decided to hold on me for a bit, so, um, it's the Virgin Mary Show! Da -da 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 -da. Hey, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm gonna learn all about it! Oh, thank God! That was getting really awkward. Bleh, I am Count Aflacula. I have come to suck. And that's it. So, rather than, oh, I don't know, hand himself over to science to help other blind people sense what he does, he decides to become a lawyer because, let's face it, saying the justice is blind phrase is just too tempting not to use. Justice is blind. See? I stopped off at Josie's bar after work, I had a few drinks. She asked me if I wanted to stick around for some fun. Uh, yeah, listen to his heartbeat to see if he's lying. Not the so obviously lying tone he's so obviously lying with. Miss Sutton. Miss Sutton enjoyed every minute of it. It's not right. Another rapist back on the streets. This, of course, forces him to take justice in his own hands. That was totally necessary. Is that guy for real? Yeah, he's for real. What do you want? Okay, I'll give you three guesses what he's going to answer that with. One, directions back to the gay pride parade. Two, a cosmopolitan, maybe with just a little bit more cranberry juice than usual. Or three, justice. justice. Just assume a superhero's answer for anything is justice. How are you? Justice. What are you eating? Justice. How do I get to your house? Oh, just take a right on Michigan Avenue off the corner of Wabash and justice. <laughs> He tracks him down to a subway where he finally gets the justice he deserves. That light, the end of the tunnel, that's not heaven. That's the sea train! That's right. Daredevil's going to kill you because Matt Murdock is a terrible lawyer. Enjoy my compensation for my terrible occupational choices! Determined to get his half of the story, Joe Pantoliano comes in playing Robert Wall minus the humor, before he became Robert Wall minus the humor, as he suspects the urban legend Daredevil might be behind this. Are you here to confirm that Daredevil is responsible for this, Detective? There is no proof that your so-called Daredevil was involved, nor that he even exists. Got it. Now let me bask in how weaselly and stuck up I am, as I know for a fact that I will in no way be contradicted at all- Whoa! Got it. You know, that's not exactly the most obvious or safest calling card. Say they didn't see that gasoline on the floor. Like, most people wouldn't. What if another subway rider was just waiting for a train while smoking? Shayla, will she ever get the message? After chewing his pills, because that's what hardcore people do, he goes to confession as the priest is apparently the only one who knows his secret. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. For I am making Daredevil. Your penance is ten years obscurity. To one Argo, one Gone Girl, and maybe one day you will be Batman. Eyewitnesses say that Casada was singled out by the demonic vigilante. He then meets up with his partner, played by John Farreau, clearly taking notes on how not to direct a superhero movie. Mr. Lee, he made his first payment. He paid in fluke. What? What? Where? 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 Front door. Not yet, so... Ah, uh, yes. Those chemicals also gave him super sniffing through glass, able to detect attractiveness, and not just a really nice perfume powers, too. It's a strange cross to bear. This, of course, is Jennifer Garner, who doesn't seem to grasp that love is blind. Hey, you know what the film thought of that joke? They would have said it. I didn't get your name. I didn't give it. Hey, some people have no compassion for the handicap. No, she left because he was Ben Affleck. 
Though I guess in some respects that's kind of a handicap. What do you want? I just wanted to get your name. He follows her outside to get her name, but oh, I can't even explain it. Just watch. Wait a second. Why don't you tell me what you do like? And we'll start there. Okay, so where do I begin with this? First of all, I think she's making it pretty clear she's not interested in your stalker ass. If she wanted, she could call the cops on you for being a creeper and grabbing her. But nah, it makes much more sense to fight him, which leads to the second and most obvious problem, she's fighting a blind guy! She doesn't know he has super senses and neither does anyone else, so really, what is there to gain? If you lose, you got beaten by a blind guy. Pretty pathetic. But if you win, congrats, you beat the shit out of a fucking blind guy! How does anyone come out looking good in this scenario? My name's Electra Nachos. No, really. What? What's your name? That so obviously can't be it. My name's Electra Nachos. Yes, you should meet my other parents with obvious real names. Anastasia Steele and Harvey Manfred Jessenden. So Murdoch and Electric Nachos seem to hit it off as they go strolling together. How did you learn how to fight like that? My father, he, he had me study with a different sensei every year since I was five years old. Sounds like he wanted to turn you into some kind of a warrior. No. He's not a victim. Which is clearly all I am if I don't learn how to kick ass. He's very equal that way. Watch your step. Oh, thank you. I didn't even... Wait. How'd you do that? Oh, now you're asking how the fuck he sees stuff? Because that shit back there, pfft, I've seen Ray Charles do that on fucking Pepsi commercials. I want you to create a paper trail. One that can be traced to Nachios. Give me bullseye. We're then introduced to our villains of the film, Michael Clark Duncan as the Kingpin and Colin Farrell as Bullseye. And I swear, these guys are having the time of their life whenever the camera is on them. It's like they know the movie is totally fucking ridiculous, so they're just gonna have fun with it. They're like Honey Badger, they don't give a shit. But he did very well for himself on the internet. But don't ask me how, so I said... <laughs> Oh my god, I swear, if Nicolas Cage was a drug, he smoked two bags worth. Oh, she's sleeping. Can I get you anything before we land? More peanuts? Please. We hope you enjoyed this charming, choking the old lady scene. Stay tuned for more uncomfortable dives into the director's psyche. So Daredevil hunts down another criminal preying on the weak when he comes across an onlooker. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm not the bad guy, kid. Why is it just because I dress like the devil, everyone assumes I'm the bad guy? I'm not the bad guy. I'm not. The hell was that about? Brooding. Brooding. Yes, every early 2000s superhero has a moment where he has to stare into the distance to think. Yeah, but those other superheroes usually have something to think about. He scared a kid because he was beating up a bad guy. How does that make him question himself? We don't need a reason. We just need to brood. Ah, oh, Jesus. Who are you? I am. Angstein. My God, where did you learn karate? My father didn't want me to be a victim. I'm amazed! Uh, you do know women learn martial arts all the time, right? Impossible. Clearly, there must be some strange reason why. No, a lot of women, just like men, take it up just because they want to take it up. That's crazy! That's got to be a reason why! Like her father was trying to protect her, or her father was secretly a spy, or her father always wanted a son! Or maybe her mother played a part somehow. <laughs> That's a good one! Yeah, in between picking flowers or not being dead! <laughs> I'm just saying, a woman learning martial arts isn't as rare as you think it is. Well, how else can we pretend she's unique when she's clearly not? I don't know. I just need a break from these early 2000 cliches. Very well. Angstine, we draw closer to the third act. You know what that means. Sexy crack? Sexy crack. Okay. I'm so tortured. Don't ever be heroes, kids.
wet truck tacos to the roof because he knows it's going to rain. And that'll allow him to see her face better. You are so beautiful. Wow, I'm sure this is the first time a superhero who wears all red is kissing his girlfriend in the rain. But we'll be remembered better for it. But hero duty seemed to be calling. What? Matt, what's wrong? Oh, it should have been about just us. And now it's about just us. I have to go. Stay with me. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm sure it was nobody important who was getting hijacked. Uh, oh. Uncle Ben? I'm sure things will turn out fine. Anyway. Ah! This is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Quick side note. Early 2000s editing seemed to really like the style that somebody's butt cheek sat on the fast forward button and then got up just before the scene starts. This is one of the few additions I actually miss from early 2000s films because, as you can tell, it gets the movie over faster. I know who you are. You're the blind lawyers from Hell's Kitchen. So he finally meets the kingpin who wants to bring Murdoch into his business. We can't represent you. Why is that? <laughs> yes, why is that, Mr. Murdoch? Because we only handle clients who are innocent. <laughs> okay, a blind man jumping around in tight stopping crimes who can see better than most people, I can take. But a lawyer who only takes innocent clients? I'm sorry, you totally clipped the suspension cord of disbelief! Now I found you. I really want to see you again. What do you say we pull the fire alarm and set the sprinklers off? But the kingpin puts out a hit on her father, and of course, Bullseye is the one to pull it off. How the hell many assassins stand out as much as this guy does? I mean, for God's sakes, the artist's rendering must be pretty easy to sketch. Bullseye. <laughs> Can I adopt you? Bullseye. It's on my head. Thought I'd point that out. I'm Irish! So Electronic Honchos thinks, of course, Daredevil killed her father and vows revenge. Meanwhile, we all giggle as one of the world's biggest comic book geeks cameos in one of the world's worst comic book movies, as the reporter realizes that the cane used as a weapon is also the cane Murdoch walks with. Which is pretty fucking stupid when you really think about it. Why the flying hell would you walk around with that? Isn't that like Bruce Wayne driving into work with the Batmobile? Somebody's gonna put two and two together. You know, you've exceeded all my expectations. Meanwhile, the Kingpin and Bullseye meet to figure out what to do about Daredevil. He... made me... miss. Too much pride can kill a man. Well, that's just ridiculous. Give you lecture all my best. <laughs> He's so evil, even roses smell bad to him. What does he have for dinner? Corned beef and Cabbage Patch Kids heads? Meanwhile, Nachios Libre prepares for her revenge by taking on the most dangerous obstacle she can think of. Sandbags! <laughs> Who the hell's even dropping those? Is there just a really confused servant who's not sure why she's attacking the flooding equipment in their chandelier room? Madam, why do you want me to paint a cartoon devil on this one? Because he's the one that killed my father. Of course he is. Would you like to tour some of the local rubber rooms in the area by any chance? So, Electron attacks Daredevil outside the one weirdo who dries his laundry at night for some reason. It wasn't me. I didn't kill your father. Liar. <laughs> nice read on that line, Garner. I didn't kill your father. Liar. Yeah, you can really cause people to crack with how convicted and not silly that sounds. Yeah, I was just up all night watching Game of Thrones. Liar. Okay, Walking Dead. Liar. All right, Bates Motel. Liar. All right, Parks and Recreations. Liar. All right, I was watching Down Abbey. I just have to know what Maggie Smith thinks of turn of the century social norms. Liar. Oh, shut up! She beats the shit out of him, but then realizes the mistake she's made. <sighs> Wait, why do I smell Guinness, stale cigarettes, and Lucky Charms? Oh yeah, he sneers at rats too. This guy could be a song lyric for the Grinch. I don't wanna lose you again. I'll find you. I should get you medical attention, but yeah, revenge is more important. Which reminds me, avenge me if I don't come back. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I can do that too. Oh wait, I forgot I suck. You wouldn't be so hot if you were a sandbag. Does this annoy you? Does this annoy you? I'm not touching you. I don't get it. I did so good at fighting a blind guy and oh, now I'm putting the pieces together. We really suck. Yeah, yeah we do. So she gets axed off as the police try to track him down, leading us to where we started. Speaking of getting started, that's what I plan to do. <laughs> oh, God, an eccentric big eye villain! Classic trademark of the early 2000s. Who are you? Name's Target. <laughs> oh, let me guess, because you always hit your target? No, I just really like clearance places. <laughs> right, you know what we need to do? You're both going to defeat him? No, nope. I'm going to defeat him while she either gets captured or killed. What? It's an early 2000s thing. We make me look all tough, but in the end I gotta be saved or moored. Or you could work together. No, this works. Right, lass, you're good at catching things. We'll catch this. Don't worry, I'll stop it with my head. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, that, wow. <laughs> Wait, now I know even more what to do. Finally fight? No, more in agony while he mugs for the camera. <laughs> no! Okay, you do what you feel you're compelled to do while I get back to the room. Wow. Bullseye tracks Daredevil down to the church and they partake in Takata and fuck you. Wow, I dodge bullets and Siamese stars and yet somehow I miss that? The only thing consistent about my powers is how inconsistent they are. Mama, they fear. <laughs> Looks like I found something you're afraid of. Let's bring on the pain. Ugh, oh, Bagora and potatoes. <laughs> but he gives him a touch of stigmata because... I don't know, are we doing Jesus symbolism in comic movies yet? And he wishes him a nice fall. Whoa. Bullseye. Hmm, I also would've accepted... Knock knock. Who was there? Justice! Do the Lord's work. Kill them. Kill them fucking all. Sit in the guard's home. <laughs> Sir, I was raised in the Bronx, Wesley. This is something you wouldn't understand. Yes, I have to go one-on-one, -on -one, even though every other murder I've committed has always been done by the hands of others. In fact, I even had others kill Daredevil's father and only delivered the final punch. It's all about honor. A very, very, very inconsistent honor. Kingpin. Daredevil tries to fight him, but forgot he sucks, so he figures maybe the sprinklers will help. Because, yeah, his powers that could sense all these tiny things apparently can't pick up a 300 pound, seven foot giant for some reason. I've been thinking about this day since I was 12 years old. Uh, I wonder if he knows he missed. Uh, oh, you got me! I'm dead! I don't understand. I'm not the bad guy. Oh, no shit! Try telling that to the two halves of the guy you let get run over by a train! That's not heaven. That's the sea train! By the way, I'm totally not the bad guy. You know what I was saying. I swear I tell him who you are. Tell the guys at Rikers all about how you got beat by a blind man. Don't worry about that. Cause I'll get out. Yeah, I know. And I'll be waiting. Justice is served. Wait, you're not killing the guy. He just said he'll get out to cause more chaos because of the faulty justice system. A justice system you're a part of. And then you said... Justice is served. Yeah, until he gets out, then it's not, you fucking idiot! Justice is served. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. So the kingpin is put away until he's let out again, but it's okay. Justice, Justice is served. served. And we cut to later, where we see Murdoch smelling someone who looked like his dead girlfriend. Makes about as much sense as the other stuff. When we then cut to the reporter deciding whether or not to reveal Daredevil's identity. A 
don't get him, man. This is probably withholding evidence, and I'm not sure why I was writing about it instead of going to the police, but I had little to no part in this movie, so why make an impact now? Clichés are so rarely done anymore. You could point to every comic book movie before it that this film was trying to imitate, from Batman to Spider-Man to Blade. But while those movies at the time offered something new, this just throws in what it heard worked in the past together without attaching any emotional logic or character to it. Once in a while you'll have something kind of neat, like the blind vision is kind of cool and some of the fights work, but they're way too few and far between. It was when the old and tired comic book cliches were fading away and the new and inventive ones were starting to take over. And all I can say is, it was definitely for the best. That's all fine and good, but what about our current situation, Buttercup? Oh, don't worry. I know the one thing that can stop every early 2000s hero or villain. Really? What's that? Look to your left, now. Oh hell, the bloody sun came up. We can't fight during the day, we only look cool at night! Well, I'll see you in the sequel, that'll never happen. I'm getting a sequel? Nah, you're dead, that wouldn't make any sense! <laughs> I'm target! <laughs> so, now what? Well, isn't it obvious? I jumped through the city looking awesome while an early 2000s song plays. Oh, you mean the ones that always sound like a southern hick is singing with a golf ball in his mouth? The very one. I'll see you whenever justice is needed, critic! I will have no fond memories of you, Angst. Until then. 